Hi everyone, this is Kyle Libby from Techplicity, and today we're going to be talking about editing your pictures in Picasa. So in the last part, we talked about getting your pictures onto your computer using Picasa, and now we're going to talk about what you can do with those pictures now that they're on your computer. So for starters, I'm going to open up Picasa, and again, I'm going to do that just by double-clicking on the shortcut right here on my desktop. Now, if for some reason you don't have Picasa on your desktop, you can always go down and click on the Start button in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. If you're using Windows Vista or Windows 7, it won't say Start. It will just have the little logo right there, but it does the same exact thing. So I'm going to click on the Start button. And you may have Picasa in this list right here. If not, you can hover over All Programs, and then you should see Picasa in this list. So right here is Picasa 3, and I can just move my mouse to the right and then go down and then click on Picasa 3 to open it. So that's another way to open up Picasa. So I'm just going to click on Picasa 3. And right now we're looking at my photo library. So again, the library is where all of your photos are stored. And right here at the top, you can see the folder that says Hawk. And it has those seven pictures that we brought in in the previous video. And at the very end of that video, I mentioned how you can look at a picture sort of in more depth. You can blow it up by double-clicking on it. So I just double-clicked on that video, and now I made it larger. Now we left off right there. And so you may have noticed in the last video that on the left-hand side of the screen right here, there are three tabs. One that says Basic Fixes, one that says Tuning, and one that says Effects. And these are the different areas where you can adjust how this picture looks. So for example, if this picture looks a little dark, there's a little slider right here that says Fill Light. And if you put your cursor on top of that slider and then click and hold on it, as you drag that cursor to the right, the image gets brighter. So you can see that I just made that image brighter. In this case, the image was already um, pretty good in terms of how much light is uh, being shown. So I don't really need to use that slider right now. If, let's say, I wanted a picture of just the hawk and not that tree that it's sitting on, I could click on the crop button right here and then I'll just put my cursor right about here and then click and drag and as I click and drag a box will appear and then that will become my new photo so that box right there would be the photo instead of what you're seeing all around it right now if you want to adjust this box once you've sort of drawn it onto the screen, if you put your cursor along the edge of the box, the cursor will change into two arrows facing opposite directions. And all you have to do is click and drag to adjust that side of the box. And so that's how you can use the crop feature. So I would say right about there. And then here on the left-hand side, there's a button that says apply and so I'm just going to click on apply and now that's my new picture obviously this picture is a little grainy and that's what can happen if you crop something that's quite small in terms of um, the overall picture it will sometimes get grainy it also depends on your camera and how far away the picture was so I really had to zoom in to get a picture of this hawk so that's another reason why it's a little bit grainy now right um, now I'm going to click on the tuning tab right here and again I have a little slider to adjust the lighting of the picture I can adjust something called highlights which is similar to uh, lighting but a little bit different I can also adjust shadows so I could make it a little bit darker if I wanted to and I can also adjust the temperature and so that sort of adjusts the the color of the picture. Finally, under effects, I could make the picture black and white by clicking on the B and W button right here. I could, for example, 
I don't know, I could say I want to make a picture that sort of glows, so I can click on the glow button. And let's see how that looks. I'll say right there. So you can see that now it sort of is glowing a little bit, so I could click apply on that. I could also make it sepia tone by clicking on sepia right here on the left side. Now it's uh, sepia. And let me go back to tuning. Okay, I think we're all set with that. And if you want, you can also add text. So for example, right here where it says text, I can click on that. And then anywhere I want to start typing, I just click. So let's say I want to add a little description on the bottom of the picture. I'll just click there. And then I'll type in Hawk Summer 2010. And You'll notice that when I put my cursor on that border that's surrounding the, the Hawk Summer 2010 text, my cursor turns into four different arrows. That's sort of the universal uh, look, I guess you could call it, for moving something. So whenever your cursor changes to that look, if you click on something and then drag, that's how you can move it. So I can move that wherever I want. So let me actually put it on the top here. and on the left hand side here it says edit text so I can adjust the font I can adjust the size so maybe I'll make it 16 and maybe I'll make it bold and underline okay and if you're happy with how the text looks so I think that right there looks pretty good just like with a lot of the other changes that we've made just click on the button right here that says apply so I'm going to click apply and now it has that text so Hawk summer 2010 now if you want to go back to your pictures so right now we've been working on one particular picture if you want to go back to your pictures just click on the back to library button right here so I clicked back to library and now we're back to the pictures so let's look at this first one here Again, to open up a picture, you just double-click on it. Now, right here, you can see that the hawk is quite a bit farther away. So if you want to zoom in on a picture on your computer, there's a little slider on the bottom of the screen right here. And if you look closely, there's a magnifying glass on top of the picture. And so what that lets you do is it lets you zoom in. So I'm going to click this slider and then I'm going to move it to the right and now we're zooming in on the picture and you'll notice that when I put my cursor on top of the picture the cursor turns into a hand so you can see that hand right there and when you click the fingers of that hand go in and so that lets you that allows you to move the picture so all you do is you put that hand anywhere on the picture you click and then you drag and that lets you move the picture sort of like putting your hand on a piece of paper and then moving it on a desk I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more by using that slider on the bottom of the screen okay right about there and so now I can really go in I can see that hawk quite a bit better than if I go back to the way it was which was like that. So that's sort of another nice feature about Picasso is how you can zoom in and look at something in a little more depth than you can just looking at it um, in terms of the whole picture at once. So let me go back to the library again. I'm going to click on the back to library button. And let's say I'm looking at that picture that we edited right here, the one that's a sepia tone. And let's say I just really am not happy with what I did with that picture. I come back to it and I just say to myself, you know what, I, I really don't know why I did that. Another really nice feature about Picasso is that if you edit a picture in a way that you aren't happy with, you can always go back to the original. And so all you need to do is put your cursor on top of that picture and then right click on it. So you're going to be using the right button of your mouse and you can think of the right button as giving you more information 
So if you want to do something more with a picture or something else on your screen, usually if you right click on it, it will give you more information. So I'm going to right click on that picture. And you'll notice that something called the context menu comes up on the screen. And one of those options is to undo all edits. If I click undo all edits, a window is going to come up asking me if I really want to do this. So you can see right here it's warning me that everything I've done will be removed. And that's what I want to do. So right here where it says this will remove all edits you have made to all of the selected pictures, do you want to continue? I am going to click remove edits. And when I do that, you'll notice that the picture right here goes back to the way it was. So now instead of being cropped and sepia tone and having the title on it, it's back to the way it was. So that's a really nice feature, and it's something to keep in mind when you're working with Picasa. You don't have to worry about editing a photo sort of to the point of no return, because you can always go back to the original photo if you aren't happy with the edits you've made. And so that's just sort of a brief overview of how you can edit photos in Picasa. There are lots of other things you can do in Picasa, and one good place to turn for help is this menu right here where it says help at the top of the screen. If you click on that, the first option says help contents and index. If you click on that, your internet browser is going to open and it's going to bring you to the Picasa help website. And what you can actually do is you can type in what you're looking for right at the top of the screen right here where it says search help. There's also sort of a table of contents right here where they have some common things that people like to do such as editing pictures, resizing pictures, things like that. But if you have something in particular that you want to do with your picture and you aren't sure how to do it, you can click on that help menu, click on help contents and index, and then when this page comes in, you can just click on that box right here where it says search help and type in, for example, um, revert to original. And then you'll notice that the first thing that comes up says undoing saved edits. And it says this option reverts your file to its original state, discarding any edits you have made. And so if I click on that blue text right here, so that blue text is called a link. It's going to take you to another place on the, on the internet. Picasa tells me how I can do that. So if you forget something or there's something you want to do and you're not sure how, the, how, you are, how you do that, you can click on help and then help contents and index and you'll be brought to this page and you can search for what you're looking for. And so that's how you edit photos in Picasa. In the next video we're going to be talking about how you can print photos in Picasa both at home and at a, a store such as Walgreens or Walmart. So thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.